Although clear aligners emerged as a game changer in orthodontic treatments, they initially faced challenges rotating certain teeth, in particular cone-shaped teeth, as these lacked sufficient surface area for the aligners to push against. To overcome this, attachments were developed, which are tooth-colored composite extensions bonded to the teeth to provide additional leverage and help move teeth more efficiently. Attachments have come a long way since their inception and are now used for a wide range of tooth movements, including, but not limited to, uprighting teeth and keeping roots parallel during bodily tooth movements. In fact, they are a critical component of clear aligner therapy and have become indispensable for achieving optimal treatment outcomes. Let us see how these tiny attachments have revolutionized the world of orthodontic treatment by learning how to place them. To place attachments, you will receive an attachment template along with the aligners package placed in a separate pouch marked as T1. The number indicates the step at which the attachments need to be placed. If your treatment involves interproximal reduction before step one, we recommend performing the attachment bonding procedure first to avoid any complications caused by gingival bleeding during IPR. Now, let's get started. First, rinse the attachment template with cold water and let it dry. Then, test fit the template on the patient's teeth, ensuring that it covers all the teeth and fits snugly until the last tooth in the arch. Check out T1 here. Notice how the template fits tightly, with no gaps between the incisal edges of the teeth and the template. In this case, we can proceed with the attachment bonding procedure. It is also a good practice to ensure that aligner number one fits properly before bonding the attachments. This will be useful later if problems in the aligner fit are noticed. Sometimes, you may encounter a poorly fitting template due to poor quality impressions or, less likely, a manufacturing defect. In such cases, never attempt to place the attachments using that template. Instead, try aligner number one to check the fitting and use it as a template if it fits perfectly. You can even cut the template in half to check the fitting and then use it for attachment placement if it still fits the teeth as desired. But what if both the template and aligner number one do not fit correctly? This issue most likely results from an impression quality problem. In such cases, it's best to obtain new records and request an adjustment. Another scenario you may encounter is when the template fits well on all areas of the arch except one or two posterior teeth. In this case, you can try pushing it over the posterior teeth and proceed with attachment placement. Make sure to use four-handed dentistry and ask your dental assistant to firmly hold the attachment template in place while curing the composite. If you feel it is challenging to use aligner number one as a template since it is made of a more rigid material, you can request a template replacement after making sure there is no impression quality defect. Moving on to the next step. To ensure accuracy, check the number and shape of attachments provided in the template and compare them to the attachments present on the 3D viewer on Eon Access. Once the fitting and attachment analysis is complete, it's time to prepare the teeth for attachment bonding. The teeth should be thoroughly cleaned, polished, dried, and isolated. It is advisable to place the attachments in quadrants or sextants. That is, limit the number of attachments placed at a time to three or four to ensure better moisture control and easy removal of the template. Next, we apply phosphoric acid for 30 seconds to etch the area and create a suitable surface for bonding. Be careful not to etch the entire tooth surface, but only the area where the attachment will be placed. After that, we rinse for 30 seconds and dry the area until a frosty appearance is visible. Then, we prepare and apply the primary adhesive material to bond the attachment to the tooth surface. Gently dry the bonding agent after application and light cure as directed by the manufacturer. If you are bonding attachments to crown teeth, then the process is a little different. Use hydrofluoric acid for etching and a silane bonding agent instead. Now, it's time to fill the attachment template with composite material. You can use either conventional restorative composite or flowable composite. Start by carefully filling the attachment template, making sure not to overfill or underfill it. Tap the attachment template on a hard object to remove bubbles and check the attachment pockets for deficiencies. 
A helpful tip is to apply a thin layer of separating medium like petroleum jelly in the attachment pocket before placing the composite. This makes it easier to remove the tray later on. Now, place the attachment template filled with composite material onto the patient's teeth. Ensure it fits well by applying gentle finger pressure or asking the patient to bite on a cotton roll. You can even use a dental instrument like a probe or tweezers to apply pressure and make sure each attachment is properly adapted to the tooth. Follow the manufacturer's instructions to light cure the composite material. To make things easier, start curing from the most posterior tooth where moisture control is a bit more challenging. Carefully remove the attachment template and inspect each attachment. At this stage, you might encounter problems like attachment debonding or partial fracture. This could happen because of a poor bonding technique or lack of proper moisture control. If you're placing attachments in quadrants, begin removing them from the side where no attachments are bonded. It's also a good idea to start from the palatal or lingual side. If the template feels too tight, use a dental instrument or carver to separate it slightly from the gingival side before pushing it away from the teeth. If an attachment completely detaches during template removal, no need to worry. You can simply remove the composite within the pocket and repeat the procedure using the same template. Additionally, if one attachment debonds during treatment, you can reattach it using the current aligner step as a template after ensuring the fit is perfect. Use a carbide finishing burr to carefully remove any excess composite material, making sure not to apply too much pressure or change the original attachment's shape. After removing the excess composite material, use dental floss to check the contact areas for any remaining composite. Finally, insert a liner number one into the patient's mouth and ensure it's fully seated. If you notice any areas where the aligner doesn't fit properly, double check that no excess composite is affecting the aligner seating. When placing attachments on your patient's teeth, keep these important tips in mind. Firstly, Limit the number of attachments you place to no more than three per quadrant at a time. This will ensure better moisture control and make it easier to remove the template. Secondly, make sure your attachments are well-defined, as this will help your patient's teeth move properly during treatment. Thirdly, if your attachments come out deformed, it may be because you didn't put enough composite material in the template. So make sure to slightly overfill the pocket when filling it. Lastly, be careful not to greatly overfill the pocket with composite material, as this may result in excess flash. Instead, slightly overfill it and tap the template to remove any bubbles. We hope these tips help you master the art of attachment placement for your aligner patients and achieve great results.